Thanks for joining this Making Healthcare Analytics Fast, Easy and Flexible webinar brought to you by Yellowfin and Prescriptive. I'm Yellowfin's Communications Manager, Lachlan James, and I'm joined uh, on the line by Prescriptive CEO, Michael Hollenbeck, and CTO for Prescriptive, Justin Ritchie. Welcome, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Lachlan. Hello, Lachlan. Glad you could join us. So I guess, why are we here today? So we're here to explain and show you how Yellowfin and Prescriptive have come together to offer a new cloud-based health analytics platform designed specifically for the needs of organisations involved in the healthcare system. So that includes payers, providers, and those that deliver products and services to the US healthcare industry. Now, the joint cloud-based solution uh, that Justin will do shortly is offered as a fully managed service via Microsoft Azure on a subscription basis. Uh, it's designed to make it easier for people like yourself to pinpoint and act on opportunities for quality improvement, operational efficiency, cost savings, and enhanced patient care. And it's also important to note here that prescriptive technology is in high demand from healthcare providers, not just in the US, but all over the world, who are experiencing these universal challenges for data-based insights. A little bit about our two companies first. So Yellowfin is a global business intelligence and analytics vendor passionate about making business intelligence as easy as possible. Yellowfin focuses on enabling pervasive business user-oriented BI deployments and delivering BI to the 90% of potential users for information consumers. Now, we achieve this by delivering BI content via intuitive dashboards and data visualizations, and in fact, Barks the BI Survey, and that's the world's largest study of BI users, has ranked Yellowfin as a top performing dashboard vendor for the past three years in a row. And we drive high adoption rates and widespread user engagement by enabling our business users to share data and data analysis easily with unique collaborative BI capabilities. Um, and one of those features is our presentation module storyboard, which we're actually using right now. To make such large-scale BI deployments possible, we also give IT the governance features they require to support, to, uh, support pervasive enterprise-wide BI. While over 10,000 organizations and over 1 million end users from all major industries and across 70 different countries use Yellowfin every day, we're here to focus on healthcare analytics. So, Directly and through fantastic partnerships like this one, Yellowfin has helped to uh, deliver BI to hospitals in Brazil and Canada, uh, health insurers, providers and funds, as well as aged care facilities across Australia and Japan, uh, the National Healthcare Service, or NHS in the UK, and of course a range of healthcare practitioners, doctor surgeries and hospital networks throughout the US. Uh, Yellowfin's capabilities have also received significant industry recognition. Uh, we've been named a champion in the Infotech Research Group's latest BI Vendor Landscape Report. Uh, we've been identified as a leader in Nucleus Research's latest technology value matrix for BI. Uh, we've been ranked as a top performing dashboard and as a top performing uh, ad hoc analysis vendor in the latest versions of uh, BARC, the BI survey, as I mentioned. And of course, we've made Gartner's magic quadrant for BI and analytics platforms for the second consecutive year in a row now. Prescriptive, well, they're a new and innovative states-based data science company. Uh, Prescriptive creates and markets predictive and prescriptive data models that guide better data-driven decision-making for people in the US healthcare industry um, through identifying opportunities for quality improvement, operational efficiency, and cost savings opportunities as well. And prescriptive uh, technology works in conjunction with an organization's existing data analysis and management systems to integrate data from multiple sources to offer a complete patient view. Uh, together, Yellowfin and Prescriptive Healthcare Analytics Platform enables uh, healthcare providers to combine and assess a range of data, including claims, hospital and pharmacy data, to improve overall patient care and associated resource management. Prescriptive's predictive and uh, prescriptive data models even enable healthcare professionals to identify emerging problems and develop preventative uh, care plans, while managers and administrators can track cost and quality measures. So Prescriptive's healthcare domain expertise and predictive modelling, delivered and visualised via Yellowfin's business user-friendly reports, charts and dashboards, provide healthcare workers with intuitive summaries of crucial cost, operations and quality metrics uh, that deliver that complete patient view that I was talking about. 
So, I mean, what are the factors that drove this innovation from Prescriptive and the partnership with Yellowfin? To give a little more context and to explain how Prescriptive is working to meet the need for analytics change in the healthcare industry, I'd like to turn it over to Prescriptive CEO, Michael Hollenbeck. So, Michael, why are we seeing this change now? Hey, thanks, Lachlan. Um, you know, it's, it is a, uh, a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to everybody on such a, a momentous day um, dealing with that exact question. You know, today in the U.S., we had a, a Supreme Court announcement on King versus Burwell that upheld some really important aspects uh, of the ACA and Obamacare uh, in support of things like accountable care organizations. So th th there's no question that uh, the industry is definitely in flux right now. And I, I know we've got some international folks who are attending online. So just to give a little bit of background, historically, the United States has had a health care system that really supports what we call fee-for-service, where uh, if, if a patient has an issue, um, if they have an acute event, they go to the hospital and the hospital takes care of that. Um, many other countries have, have definitely been oriented at trying to keep people healthy, but um, the U.S. healthcare economy has really supported the, the notion of volume and, and, and bringing in uh, a number of people to the hospital, and that supports how, how the, the, the folks in the healthcare industry get paid. Now, because of the economics of the situation and what's happening in the U.S., that type of growth and that type of model has really been unsustainable. So you see right now that there is a, a mass movement towards value um, or, or wellness. And the notion is we have to direct our resources to keep people healthy and, and to really keep them out of the hospital. So. You know, this has been the, the, the transition from, from fee-for-service or from volume to value. I mean, I, I don't think I've listened to a webinar in the last four years that hasn't discussed that as, as being a principal element. And it, it's almost trite, and, uh, but, but still you hear about it. Now, what has really changed, though, is Medicare's stance and Medicare, uh, actually the, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services putting concrete timelines in place. Several years ago, we saw them uh, putting down readmission penalties that, that drove hospitals to really pay attention to that. But now what we're seeing is that um, in January, they, they put out a mandate that said by 2016, by the end of 2016, 85% of Medicare contracts will be tied to a population health or some quality-related function. And that's $600 billion that they expect to, to uh, uh, take the 85%. Now, what's important to know is that today, only 15% of those contracts are in that type of a, a quality tied or population health tied uh, contract. So, I mean, that, that's a massive transition. And people have identified very clearly that predictive analytics is a key technology that's going to support that transition. Yet only 15% of hospitals are using predictive analytics. And I think if you were to look at that 15%, I think um, you'd, you'd likely make the observation that there's an awful lot of opportunity uh, to better use that technology. So when CMS, when the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services makes that observation and says we're going to do that, you know, it's, it's never a, a direct path. It's never a lack of complication. I mean, there's always situations that are going to arise that's going to make that complicated. So while we might want to see in plan in theory this direct line that gets us there, we know that this is going to be a really complicated journey. And, and we've seen that a lot as we've made the transition in the U.S. So the reality is that we can expect a lot of technical complications, a lot of organizational com complications, and, and, and frankly, political ones. So the three major technical hurdles that we see in the industry that we work with our, our business partners on, certainly that notion of data liberation and preparation. Years ago in the ERP world, um, we saw that the vendors were, were grabbing that data and treating it as though it were their own. And people were having a really complicated time grabbing that data and, and blending that with other 
uh, applications in order to get one unified view of the enterprise. And that's certainly what we're seeing with EMRs within a healthcare environment. And then in order to do these population health-based contracts, data enrichment that allows us to you know, do things predictively like identify at-risk patients or assign patient activation scores for prioritization or even simple things like you know, just providing standardized quality metrics like HEDIS or PQRS or, or identifying gaps in care. These are things that healthcare organizations are struggling with uh, in terms of just adding that to their base data. And, and finally, getting that information back into workflows, getting that information back into scenarios where people can easily take advantage of that. And we're, we're pretty proud of our uh, partnership with Yellowfin and what they offer us in terms of the display capabilities and making this really simple to consume for, for end users where, where we're not putting that data back into the actual workflows in the source system. Thanks for that, Michael. Look, that overview makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, I know that we've got uh, some more technical folk on the call who'd really appreciate a more detailed explanation uh, of how prescriptive achieves those things that you've just discussed. So can we get a little bit more detail? Yeah. So prescriptive has architected our solution to be an enablement technology and to enable all of our business partners. And we, we work with payers, we work with providers, and we work with industry partners. And industry partners many times are, are BI consultancies that are working directly with uh, healthcare organizations. They, they could be software companies or they could even be solution partners that are you know, doing things like uh, you know, providing outreach to, uh, you know, to manage populations. So we look at our architecture as enabling all of those constituencies. And the key that we focus on as a data science company is that enrichment of the data. And so you, you'll see that Prescriptive has brought to market what we call the predictive model market for healthcare. And this is the world's first open market for commercializing models. And um, I won't steal Justin's thunder because he's going to show that in a moment. But that data enrichment is the core of what we do now. Um, in order to do that, you have to deal with the, the data sources and you have to deal, deal with uh, getting that data procured and ready to go. So we have something called the Care Analytics Repository that makes it much simpler to connect into those data sources. Matter of fact, the Care Analytics Repository is driven by, the, by interfaces that, that actually have turnkey uh, interfaces with approximately 70% of the EMRs that are currently being deployed right now. And then we offer the ability to blend both clinical and claims so that you're able to get that unified view of the, the patient so that you can do analytics. And then, of course, we want to liberate this data and make it readily available for our customers so that they can pull that back into their own solutions that they deliver to partners or uh, back to payers and providers so they can funnel that through uh, dashboards that we create in Yellowfin or through their own BI application. Now, to walk you through just a little bit, uh, a little bit more thorough example here, I want to talk just through a, a couple of individual scenarios. On the data liberation side, a great example of the work that we've done is we worked with a small critical access hospital, and they were struggling with an EMR that, that wasn't integrated with its other uh, strategic systems, and, and specifically, they had a emergency department system that didn't talk to their primary EMR. Well, th that was causing them a lot of problems because they weren't getting the reporting, they weren't getting the analytics, they, they didn't have real-time access to see who was transitioning from the emergency department to, uh, inpatient, um, to an inpatient status. So through the care analytics repository, what we were able to do is extract that data from the EMR and, and then to clean up that data, normalize it, get it ready for, for analysis, and then to blend both the, the emergency department system as well as the EMR. And then we, were, uh, we provide a managed data repository, that managed analytics repository, so they didn't even have to worry about that. And so what they were afraid was going to cost millions of dollars to take care of, we were able to take care of in, in under two months and to alleviate the burden of, of you know, managing the data repository. And they found that to be really a positive thing and a testament to what we can do with that, that uh, care analytics repository. 
we note that for some of our customers who are software vendors or who provide care services to uh, either a payer or provider, we can in a turnkey fashion you know, extract that data, make that available to their application, and, and allow them to do the things that they need to do. So what you'll find is that we've done our, our level best to build simplicity right in. So you know, if, I'm, if I am one of these uh, software vendors or if I'm a BI consultancy and I know that I need to extract that data, we've made that really easy. And not just you know, to, a, to, to reach right into the, uh, the, the EMR itself, but also to, to give you real-time interoperability standards and have that just available to you and, and you know, so, so stuff you don't have to muck around with. The second scenario that I wanted to talk a little bit about was, was really this data enrichment process. So we worked with a, a BI consultancy that, that was working with a primary care group to deploy a, a shared savings plan, and they had several payer organizations involved in that. And they didn't want to have all of the separate systems from, from payer to payer to payer because that made it really complicated for the small uh, primary care organization. So what we did was to work with that consultancy to extract that data and then to enrich the data with you know, the HEDIS metrics that went across the population so that was normalized and they could compare apples to apples to give them a, a gap in care list. Um, to identify those opportunities to provide that care. And then further, to, to risk stratify those folks with gaps, and then to score the activation levels of those individual patients so that they were able to, uh, again, prioritize their, their outreach. And, and that's another example of how the, the prescriptive platform is able to, to help them. So in that particular case, you know, the, the simplicity that we have within our data enrichment engine is whether it's predictive models or whether it's explicit quality metrics or, or things like you know, patient attribution lists or automating disease registry logic, we have the ability to do that straight out of the box for them. Now that I've done an overview on that you know, and, and talked about it conceptually, I'd like to invite Justin Ritchie, the CTO of Prescriptive, to do a demo on that and show us, show us what that looks like in real life. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everyone. We're going to do a quick overview of the predictive model market and also how we utilize predictive analytics with retrospective analytics within our Yellowfin deployment. First, with our predictive model market, I kind of wanted to set a precursor in, in the industry for really two paths, build versus buy. You can buy a product off the shelf, but most of the time it's a one model implementation. After 18 months, you only have that one model and you try to stretch it to the best of its ability or you try to build it yourself. You hire a team of data scientists, you hire a director to manage the staff, but really a lot of the data scientist work is actually in the ETL and pre-processing of data. And with the predictive model market, we automate that process. So not only is it one model, but we have over 110 models for people to consume on a power user-based fashion. So instead of you worrying about is it a linear regression versus a random forest algorithm, we can actually focus on the insight and the utilization with your organization for predictive models that's use case specific. As you can see on my home screen here, we have a predictive model market intro video. We have a slider that's introducing different topics. And with Prescriptive, we really focus on the subject matter expertise to help people understand how to utilize this type of data in your organization, especially in healthcare. It's a highly fragmented industry, both from a data silo as well as a thought leadership perspective, whether it's radiology, cardiology, oncology. Predictive analytics is not a seamless transition between those different departments and managing patient care. On the bottom left of my screen, I have different models in production. And with having that ability to consume that on a power user basis, we can actually show the accuracy statistics, which is just a C-stat, as well as the score of patient files. If whether you want it on a daily, weekly, quarterly, we can automate that seamless transition via PMML standards. And on the bottom right screen, as you can see, it's kind of our trending models, our top five, our top six that are most popular with the rest of customers. As I mentioned earlier, we really focus on use case specificity in allowing people to consume based on that need rather than the technical underpinnings that might not be understood well in the organization, really helping you communicate that better to the other business users. I clicked on population health. Obviously, when you're taking on a risk-bearing contract and other pieces, whether it's interoperability or automating the EMR vendors, 
we really have that insight to allow you to use that with your organization from day one. As you can see, our top five is at-risk cohort builders, and that's really a report that is generated from a predictive analytics perspective of what patients have a rising risk score. We have your general credit score that we call our risk score that is associated with the riskiness of that patient coming from claims and clinical data. And I'll mention the data sources in a second. We do have facility patient access risk. You know, a lot of the times just getting access to the right healthcare facilities, whether it's just simply getting a ride to the hospital to meet that gap in care, is something that we can isolate based on our predictive analytics algorithms. We do have ED emission risk as well as probability with diabetes compliance. We do embed our Yellowfin dashboards, and we can actually launch individual customers' instances of Yellowfin from this product directly. As we click on our model page, this gives us the ability of looking at all of our models in one seamless interface. And we can look at different organizational types, categories, data sources. Our three main drivers are claims, clinical, and pharmacy data. We can do other sources as well, whether it's behavioral analysis, we can do social media data, but these are the three underpinnings that really drive a lot of our models. And we have different things where it's at risk that we mentioned earlier, we have fall risk, inactivity risk, we real utilize readmission risk, length of stay, you name it. But as I mentioned earlier, we have over 110 models for you to consume on an ongoing basis. And kind of when I talk about automation, compared to the BIB model earlier is that having that data feed automated from our care analytics repository and our enrichment layer, we have the ability of utilizing these predictive analytics on demand without having the need to do other implementation. A lot of the times that we've seen other customers and their pain points is that if they even want to change a model even slightly, let's say it's targeted towards females above 65, if they want to change that towards a male demographic, they would have to pay for that custom implementation schedule but also pay for that query based on provider and the organizational level based on covered lives. So there's a lot of pain points in the industry that we alleviate with the predictive model market. And finally, I want to talk about the PNML standard format. And what we utilize is our own developed internal models, but also giving users the uh, adoption rate to actually update their own PNML format. And as you can see here, I can type in my name. I can type in my email. And we can actually load in PMML format from the URL. It's very similar. It's an Azure hosted feature that allows us to do that. And if I click on just a very basic PMML file, I open that. And I can actually look at the PMML standard in my browser to submit it to Prescriptive to be able to put that into consideration. As you can see, this is just a very basic nine PMML format. Uh, we do use the DMG standard for the PMML format. And that's our PMM. And now I'd like to show you how we utilize this within Yellowfin. And for our dashboards, we're really having retrospective analytics as well as predictive analytics all in one screen. As you can see, this is for an at-risk hospital summary dashboard. We, we look at the population size of 10,000, average claims, month-to-date readmissions, average risk score, which is generated from our PMM, and also given the ability to look at disease registries top position by cost. But the great thing about Yellowfin is that we can actually drill down to record level. With other VI vendors in the industry, a lot of the times a graph is just a graph. But now with Yellowfin and Prescriptive, you can actually drill down to the patient record level detail to allow one to work with that disease registry or patient list to work on that actively. So if I click on medium risk, I can look at individual PCPs, I can look at individual compliance within the heat metrics and different quality measures. I can subscribe as, that as a favorite, and I can also share that with other employees in my organization. When I look at full-born risk, we have the ability of looking at cost as our x-axis and our y-axis is risk, and I can actually look at where my cost is broken down by risk. Obviously, if a PCP is managing a very large patient population but a very low risk, that might not be something we want to actually look at. What we really care about is the very high risk in the very high dollar amount. So as you see here, we have Dr. Harley. And I can actually drill down and look at what different types of patient data underlines that risky profile of that PCP in that organization. As we look at outreach and quality data, we can set metrics and benchmarks of showing our compliance rates. So we have actual versus target, and we can actually look at for a KPI demographic, whether or above or below that standard. 
So as you can see here with asthma outreach, we want to get 75% compliance and we're actually at 77%, which is great. And finally, within the Yellowfin environment, I wanted to show you with the ability to do self-service BI. And with our column data that's powered by the PMM, we have the ability of looking at patient data on an ongoing basis, but also to how to look at it in the self-service capacity. So when I click on the filter page capability, I really want to target any patient with comorbidities of four or five. And let's say we care about a risk level of high, very high medium. And all I do is hit go, and it pulls open that list. And what I can do is that I can actually work with other people with the collaboration tools provided from Yellowfin and give that ability to actually work on that patient list. As we met with clients previously, a lot of the times they just want to log into their environment and know who they need to talk to, whether it's a care manager, population health manager, or somebody just in the quality department. We want to make sure that Elephant and Prescriptive can power that insight in your organization. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Michael. We wanted to highlight really the three ways that we hope to be able to enable our business partners, again, whether it's a BI consultancy, whether it's a critical access hospital or a very large hospital system or even a, a payer, to give you three ways that, that we can assist both in, in grabbing that data um, in, in helping enrichment capabilities necessary to really identify the, the opportunities to reach out to your members or to your patients. And then ultimately the way to integrate that with your own systems and, and display that to make it really a lot easier for you. Prescriptive as a company is, is very dedicated to, to making this as simple as possible and, and, and certainly bringing that data science to your practice. So we'd love to hear uh, about any needs that you have in terms of data science or, or offer any thoughts on how we might be able to assist. So we hope that you'll go to www.prescriptive.com. Just let us know if there's anything that you might need in this area or, or, or the types of things that you're trying to get done that we might be able to assist you with in data science. So Lachlan, I'll, I'll hand it over to you with my thanks to you as, as well as the, the folks who showed up today for the, for the webinar. So hey, look, Michael. Thanks very much for that. And Justin, I think that was a really, uh, a really insightful uh, demonstration. So look, um, as as Michael alluded to, that that basically concludes uh, the formal part of today's presentation. So I just want to quickly summarise what we've been through. So look, we've introduced our companies and explained why we're working together. Uh, we've identified the need for reporting and analytics change in the healthcare industry, and we, you know we've outlined how Yellow Fin and Prescriptive are working together to meet those needs. And you know, finally, you know, we've shown you uh, the type of insights to Prescriptive and Yellowfin can deliver in a live demonstration. Thank you everyone, thank you Justin, thank you Michael, and we'll speak to you all very soon about making healthcare analytics fast, easy and flexible. Thank you very much for joining us.